Abba is the newest character in Guilty Gear Strive. The last time we've seen her is actually in Guilty Gear XX, and she's from Guilty Gear Isuka, which is something like a party game plus beat em up game. Kind of weird game, check it out. Now on release, because of her weak normal mode and then super strong jealousy rage mode, high level Guilty Gear players thought she was too polarizing and some of them even said she was bottom one, but after a week or so, a lot of them came around. Today, I want to look at her in a little bit more detail. So in my opinion, you can split up a fighting game into four phases. Offense, when you catch them blocking. Defense, when they catch you blocking. Neutral is when you're kind of vying for position. And knockdown is when you knock them down. And we're gonna use these phases of the game to see how good ABBA actually is. So the first question is, does the character have any moves that are plus in offense? Having moves with frame advantage just means you can maintain offense pretty good. And ABBA actually has quite a few options for this. Of course, she has the standard close slash, but she also has this key grab move, which a plus two guard crush. While you can just frame trap normally with it, the other thing is that since it's a guard crush, you can throw people way faster than normal. She also has this move, Donzai, but the opponent can be pretty far, especially if the opponent uses faultless defense, but she is advantageous on this as well. When you have resource, she has her kick super. So this is plus six, but the jealousy rage super is incredibly plus you have plenty of time to work with the next question is actually two questions combined from previous videos so does she have some type of unique overhead that other characters don't have so either an instant overhead or uh efshiki as we call it or an offensive fuzzy guard both of these terms are fine or a safe dust on block so typically in this game everyone has a universal overhead called dust on hit you're actually even so if I use my kicks, I'm going to get hit here because they're not five frames. So I'd have to use something a little bit faster to stop this. But on block, they are extremely punishable. So having a way to make it safe is a uniquely strong thing that a character can have. Abba doesn't really have this outside of the typical dust into 5D. But the good news is she does have the other two. Kinda. So for starters, we have to talk about the Jealousy Ray Shoot to 6K. So this move is an extremely fast overhead that pops up so you get to combo but it's not instant instant speed depending on who you talk to this is like borderline reactable i've basically called it as overhead because i just think it's really really hard to react to but you know that's that's like a personal thing on how you deal with this but it's harder to deal with depending on how you set it up and how much time you give your opponent to assess the situation but on top of that as well she does have the offensive fuzzy guard so this is a concept of having enough frame advantage on a jump in that the opponent if they switch their guard to low will be hit standing and you can continue to combo she has a lot of ways of doing this so she does have a lot of unique ways of doing mix-ups next question is how quickly does the character build meter building meter and being really active is important in this game you gain meter for all sorts of actions including approaching opponent attacking and blocking and more she actually kind of gains a lot of meter from moving forward even though she doesn't move very quickly and her combos actually build a ton of meter because her key grab builds a ton of meter so she's a character that doesn't build meter from like doing stuff in neutral so much but from like actually hitting you so this is actually one of the main benefits for doing double key grab combos of her because it just builds a ton of meter Another thing you can think about is that since she has a lot of HP, I believe she actually has top 5 HP in the game, there are cases where you can get hit over and over and over and just get meter that way. So excuse the silly example, but here we're going to have Happy Chaos just kind of beating up on our girl, right? So breaking the wall of Wild Assault, and then he's going to pull up, I'm going to get hit again just for funsies, I'm going to get hit again just for funsies, break the wall super, and then here he comes. So these combos are by all means, not like the best combos of all time, but there are certainly cases of, I basically did nothing but get hit <laughs> and I got 50 meter anyway. And there are characters in the game who can't expect this. So this is actually another aspect of uh, what's good about having really high HP in this game. The next question is what do they get off their throw situation? In normal mode from zero jealousy gauge, you can actually just get it all back. When I say all, I actually mean 25 back, but that's pretty good because you need 25 Jealousy Rage to be able to switch modes in the first place. In mid screen, she has some left-right mix-ups. And in Jealousy Rage mode, you basically get access to high lows, like the ones I showed you before. 
The main special thing about Jealousy Rage mode in particular is that her throw has a long total duration, so actually throwing somebody uses a lot of the gauge. So it can kind of be seen as a detriment, especially if the player doesn't have something to deal with this specific situation, where you have low Jealousy Rage and you're forced to exit right away. So the next question is, how good is the character against YRC? So outside of standard stuff like being able to use Blue RC or using jabs, she also has added benefit of her 2K being YRC safe. On top of that, she has a lot of guard crush moves. So guard crush moves, you just can't YRC in general. So I would say she's actually slightly above average against YRC because she just has a lot of guard crush moves that are plus to use, plus an additional kick that she also uses for mix-ups. So it's actually a pretty good set of options. And on the other side, we have how good is the character against burst? So uh, once they changed the burst to be full screen, a lot of characters who were good against burst became somewhat weaker against burst. In Amba's case, you're mostly talking about jealousy rage mode. And in the situations where you get to combo from around round start to where HC is. So either hits like this or hits like this. And mainly because she has like jump combos and wall bounce combos where she can kind of either jump forward and block and land and continue to combo or she can use her 2k which will RC save. So for example, I have this combo. So this probably doesn't look like the most optimal combo of all time, but there's a lot of burst safe points here and it really does force the opponent to actually wait for specific moves. And if you don't do so and your burst seed hits, then she'll just block the burst no problem, which is not that common in this game right now. And specifically for the last hit, it's kind of tough too, because that last 2k does squall spot here. So your counter here would be to just burst quickly or burst specific moves like this. And once you get to that point, you can play a lot of guessing games with the opponent. So that's pretty good. Not a lot of characters have stuff like that. Next question is, does the character have to hit you to win? or make you block to win. And it's an interesting question in this character's case because of her resource and what it does. So pretty much when you're in this mode, you can definitely win by catching someone blocking because you could immediately set up mix-ups, use VRC for all fans, and threaten your instant overhead, quote unquote. However, how do you get to use this resource in the first place? The most reliable way is by hitting them. So either getting a throw and transforming right away, or honestly sometimes installing a neutral or getting up close and using your guard crush to threaten offense. So it is, it's debatable. I think really you can win just because you made them block, but that is not your main way of winning games. Like you do actually have to hit them to win. It sounds silly, but when you talk about win conditions, like there's some characters that they are equally strong hitting you and making you block or there are other characters who are only really enacting their game plan after they hit you single time. So what's her average damage like? It's pretty okay. She also has like really good corner carry in a lot of ways just take you from corner to corner or really far away from the corner into like full routing. The main things that add a lot of damage to her combos are Danzai and 6H. But both those moves do a lot of wall damage, so you have to assess your position and what you want to do pretty quickly in her combos because in Jealousy Rage mode, you're always operating on a timer. Then it's what type of Wild Assault does she have? So she has a blue Wild Assault, so you primarily use this to make your 5H combos in normal mode better because if, if you don't do this, then you're pretty much doing this as there is a range where 5H Rekka actually whiffs, but there's rarely a range where the kick would whiff after 5H. Well, that knockdown is not that great, so you can use Wild, Wild Assault to help you here. But then also, you can use it for offense. So you can use it to mode change right away. And the attack is jump cancelable and special cancelable, so you can use it to keep yourself RC safe. You can use it to mode change back. You can use it to set up offense. You just use it for all sorts of things. Next question is how good is she against the Flex Shield? And this is pretty important because she is a fast pressure character with a lot of mix-ups. So being good against this is really important. And the good news is I think she's pretty good against it because she has a bunch of advancing normals and big normals. So where this would whiff, this connects, even though it pushes her really far. In Jealousy range, again, she has pretty big normals, but also you have 2H. And the last question is about her wall break situation. And it's pretty good because you're usually either breaking like this. So 
You're transforming using Wall Assault. You're breaking the wall for Super, which puts her in Jealousy Rage mode. Or you're using Key Grab in order to switch to Jealousy Rage mode. So you're going into Jealousy Rage mode while passively building Meter, and she has a lot of uses for Meter. So it's a pretty good situation for her. Comboing into the wall in general means you're building a bare minimum 25, maximum 50 to 75, depending on your combos. So as long as you route properly, you should have a big advantage when you break the wall. So the next topic would be her defense and defense is pretty important. So offense, this game is an offensive game uh, and offense is like a one player thing. So you can you can just like practice offense and combos on your own. There is more advanced stuff on offense you can do that relies on like paying attention to your opponent's habits, confirming their guard at the highest level. That's actually pretty hard to do. But for the most part, usually things like offense and combos are the easiest things about playing a character. Defense ends up being much harder. So having good defensive tools and being able to use them effectively helps a character out quite a bit. So the first question here is how fast is their fastest defensive button? And the answer here is it's actually pretty good. It's four frames. So she has an extremely fast jab. And one of the best things about it is that it combos both into Rekka and her key grab if you're close enough. This is pretty necessary just because she's not mobile in normal mode and people can just like get away from her really fast. So when she does reverse the situation, she gets a good reward. Next question is, does she have a meatless reversal? So despite this being called parry, it is not actually frame one. It activates on frame seven, so you can't use it as a reversal. You're mostly using it preemptively unless they're doing something that's easy to react to. The next question is, how fast is their reversal super? So knowing your character's reversal super speed is pretty important because it lets you know if your super is actually an option in situations or not. So for example, we have Johnny doing wall break. He's doing it to Soul Bad Guy. And here I reversed with Soul's DP, his STP. It's nine frames. Johnny can't really safe jump nine frame characters. However, Johnny can safe jump 10 frame reversals. So hers is a little slow, which is technically not a good thing. The next question is, does the character have a horizontal or vertical super? And the answer is, it's a little bit of both. It is pretty far and also has two hits. Then also, it does hit airborne and actually also hits behind as well. As a side note, if you hit with it from behind, she doesn't transform right away, which is kind of funny. The next question is how good is their backdash? And Abba is kind of unique in that she has two different backdashes. She has her normal mode backdash and her Muraha backdash. So her normal backdash is six frames invincible, 24 frames total, which is pretty normal for a big body character. Actually, there are some small differences like Gold Lewis having a faster backdash than other big body characters. But as far as a big body, she's pretty standard in this way. But in Moroha mode, they actually gave her a 16 frame total backdash with the same invincibility. So in Jealousy Rage mode here, she actually has the best backdash in the game where depending on who you talk to, this is the worst type of backdash to have. Depends on who you talk to though. The numbers do matter though. So I do have my favorite Guilty Gear character of all time here, Elfelt, and here she is doing a string into high and low as you may know if you played against her and even if you do an, a high block sun move like her 5h there's still a gap so you can try to backdash but if you look at my handy dandy virtual controller here you'll see that when i'm backdashing i'm trying to block but i'm getting hit anyway so what's happening is that alpha is hitting my backdash with her overhead so in this case, you're kind of boned and you have to kind of just take the mix up. But in the case you block in Moroha mode, you actually recover so fast that you have all sorts of punishes you can do. Between throw, 2P, she just recovers so much faster that you can just reverse the situation. So this is a pretty good example of how good her Moroha backdash is. The next question is how fast does the character 6P activate? And here we're talking about upper body invincibility. So this is a pretty important question for using 6P on defense in particular. This was a much more important question earlier in the game, but between changes like making more character 6P activate faster and normalizing some 6P hitboxes, a lot of 6Ps in the game work similarly now. So now it's just a question of does it activate in frame two or frame three and hers activates on frame two so the last question is how quickly does the character build meter so this kind of circles us back to offense but from a defensive perspective the meter gives you access to reversal yrc to get them off you and supers so building meter here is pretty important and like we said before ama is pretty 
good at building meter so she builds a lot of meter for hating you right especially if she's using key grabs and combos and then she also builds a lot of meter for getting hit so you'll usually have at least one attempt to use 50 meter in a match either on offense or on defense so our next topic is neutral and this is the phase of the game where both players are vying for some type of clear advantage, either offense or knockdown. Neutral is extremely difficult to practice and there's a ton of stuff that people do that is technically not safe, but because it's neutral, you can't really punish them for it. It is an incredibly deep topic and one that's pretty hard to practice because you do need to actively play the game to be good at it. Of course, offense is a clear decider of games because that's how you're landing your hits with your various mix-ups, but being able to keep a good neutral presence and not get overrun, and also being able to reverse defensive situations are also important in the cases that someone actually gets in on you. And for me, things like neutral and defense are more of a differentiator between players than something like offense. Question number one for neutral is, can the character attack from safe ranges? So what I mean is, can they attack from any range? There are some characters that are really good here, some characters that are good here, some characters that are good here. So when a character is good at all these ranges, that means they have something they can do at all these ranges. So Kai is able to attack here, He's able to attack here or here. He's able to attack here. Great with punching buttons. And he's pretty fast. So if he wants to approach, he's able to. So if the character can't get close to them, he could use a slow fireball to cover him. He actually is extremely flexible in neutral. This is actually one of the most important things I learned about the great Kai Wars of 2022, 2023, about how good the character really was. Now, in Amba's case, she sorta has this ability, so in normal mode, clearly she can't attack from all ranges, but she can attack from pretty far, and she has a move that low crushes, and a move that goes under mid poke, so you can go under this, depending on your timing, you can actually get over this, and you have this big button. And on top of that, if someone is playing too defensively, one of your main responses is to simply transform and try to force the situation. Here, she's incredibly quick. So you're not really relying on the same rules as everyone else. And she has massive buttons. And for the preemptors in the chat, her Rekka beats 6P. So you have to engage her in a pretty honest fashion and on her terms. On top of that, with meter, she's able to punish fireballs with super in both modes, but it's only, in my opinion, super meaningful in jealousy rage mode. So I wouldn't say that she's able to attack from all ranges in particular, but she's able to move around the screen in different scenarios. Next question is how fast is her air dash? So it might be funny, but she actually does have a standard air dash, even though she does not go as far. And then this is also actually a standard air dash. So even though it looks weird, uh, she does not have any special numbers or anything on it. Still, the two characters who have faster air dashes in this game are Chip and Milia only. Next question is, do they have a slow jump H? So having a slow jump H means if you react to this too slowly, I'm using 6P, but I'm reacting too slowly and I'm getting hit. This usually means you have to use a different button, like a jab or a crouching anti-air if you're blessed enough to have one in order to anti-air them. Now she does have a slow JH, but it is not used like other characters at all. So uh, I won't really count this. However, she does have her jump D to alter her jump height. You have the ability to make anti-air swift by double jumping and doing JD. If I do JD immediately here, there's actually a small chance I get hit. So it's really important to do the second jump first to make sure that you clear it. In Jealousy Rage Mode, she just has jump H. It's just huge and launches. So if you see the opponent whiff, she has some of the highest return on the game of punishing anti-airs. So she's not stalling here. She's just really good at with punishing them. Next question is, can they 50-50 you from neutral? And again, the answer is kinda. You're really talking about jealousy rage mode here. Um, in both modes, she can technically do it with moves because again, she has a low crush slash mid crush to this game. This thing here is character specific, but you could also just go under it. So it's kind of the Eno thing and Alpha thing where you're forcing different properties of invincibility on a character from neutral. But in Jealousy Reach mode, you do have the threat of canceling into overhead at any time. So as long as you use a normal that's also cancelable into 2H or 2D, then you have threat of high-low plus throw. 
So it kind of depends on who you talk to. Pretty much in jealousy rage mode, I would say yes. The next question is, can the character approach immediately or do something immediately meaningful after gold burst? And the answer pretty much here is yes. In normal mode, the obvious answer would be to just switch. But if you're in jealousy rage already, you can literally just get over there and do whatever. So I would say her gold burst situation is actually pretty good and meaningful. The next question is something from Exert actually, and that's, does the character have a fuck it RC option? So this one's pretty straightforward. It's you have meter and you're like, I don't know what to do, so fuck it. And the answer to this is also kinda. So in normal mode, I probably would not be using meter on this. There's tricks like this that you might've seen before, but uh, it's not like super great. In Jealousy Rage, however, uh, you don't technically even need to use the meter. You can just pull up with Rekka, it's incredibly powerful. Just when you have 50, you can just dump the meter on Super and approach when you want. So it's less fuck it RC and instead it's like fuck it, I'm gonna Super. Next question again is how fast is their 6p, which is two frames, which means when you do preempt, then it works out pretty well, especially with the hurt blocks. She uniquely also has crouching anti-air, so there are situations where you just be sitting and you have more time to react when they approach you, especially when they're trying to go above you. So that is really good as well. Next question is, does the character have any like specific tool or something about them that makes people play the game differently against them? The answer is a resounding yes. This character's design makes people do this. So. People play pretty defensively against her because she's not mobile in normal mode. And when she bow changes, people either again try to run away to the best of their ability or they understand that they kind of have to like send it or get hit and try to burst. People have to use a lot of different strategies against this character that they're not comfortable with because there's at this point a general way people play every character and a general way people tend to play against certain types of characters. And there hasn't really been a character like Abba that heavily encourages really defensive play. Maybe just Gold Lewis, like the big bodies, but not, you can't say that for Bedman because Bedman's kind of a defensive character too. The big thing here is the threat of transformation makes people play the game differently. The next question is, can the characters convert all their hits into combos without using meter? And the answer thankfully is yes. It does make a lot of sense too, because she's not very mobile. At this point in the game, there's only a couple of characters that have like, really inconsistent conversions or things that they just can't convert on purpose so you're looking at characters like zato with jabs and like biken with far slash and 2s and things like that at this point they either have made things easier to combo like for example on launch this 5h would not connect and if i was closer to the corner he would actually get a full combo on that uh it's a meaningful change they made to soul to help him chase backdash so they either gave characters things like that to make things more consistent, or they just have Red Wild Assault to help them. Like I mentioned at the beginning of defense, actually, she's quite good at converting light hits because her Rekka is really fast. So even with her really huge kicks, even your opponent advances into a move, you should be able to get a knockdown in normal mode of some type. And she's really consistent at comboing in Jealousy Rage. And this makes sense because Jealousy Rage is on the timer and she can't recover passively. She has to recover actively by hitting you or absorbing moves. So her being able to consistently convert in Jealousy Rage mode makes sense. And the last question is, can the character dash block? So outside of big body things like Potemkin not being able to do it and Nago not being able to do it. And those two are because they, they can't dash in general. Nago has to use a special move to do it. The big one comes from Johnny because his dash actually traverses a pretty large portion of the screen but he cannot dash during it at all so what she has uniquely actually is if you dash and hold block with her she just keeps advancing and the moment someone swings into her she's just gonna block automatically so that's pretty unique to her then in jealousy rage mode she's just really fast and she could do it as normal so the last question is knockdown. So knockdown is a situation you have a ton of control over. It's one that generally characters have the most control over, not thinking about the opponent's resources, of course. And you use this to get just control over the game. So in case you're playing someone who feels random or is really trying to force options on you, if you get a knockdown, you can force them under control. So it's pretty important to be good at this as well. And the first question of this being, can the character win off a throw? She does have the ability to get her resource back here without having to hit them. 
If you hit them here, you just get more resource, which is great. And you have the mix-ups from before as well. For Jealousy Range mode, it's a little trickier though, because again, she does use a lot of resource here. So it uses around like 10 to 15%. So uh, while she gets a good situation all of it, you are on a timer and it uses a good amount of the timer. But overall, I would say yes, because you do get pretty good advantageous situations from throw. The next question is how much resource can the character build from a throw? So again, in Jealousy Rage, you're spending resource. So this is more of a normal mode question. You get 25 here, unless they reverse on the close slash. But you are plus here. So from there, the real question ends up being how does the interaction play out? There's not really a way of forcing yourself to get more unless you use other resources like Wild Assault. The next question is, can the characters protect themselves from reversals while still being able to keep up their offense reliably? Pretty much yes. So a lot of these are you're going to be switching to jealousy mode or doing something. And the other nice thing is that Donzai actually beats supers and DPs. And usually the opponent needs some really specific option or 100 meter to use super to get past Donzai. In the case you're in jealousy range mode, she just has a lot of safe jumps. So it's pretty simple to cover options. If you don't know what's happening, you could just Donzai anyway. Which does again bring us back to the opponent needs pretty specific counterplay to deal with Donzai. The last question is, is the good knockdown loopable? So if you have an, a really good situation, you want to keep it. And in her case, you're not really doing this because your main goal is to break the wall with a lot of Jealousy Rage meter and ideally knock them down as well. So. You're not really looping, let's say this, because you're just getting into Jealousy Rage mode, or you're not really looping this, because again, it's just something that gives you resource. In the case of having resource, when you hit them, you're just gonna combo anyway. And from here, there's not really much to loop. Like from here, Johnny is in a situation where you can die from the next hit. So with all that, where does Abba stand relative to the cast? Because to be honest, and I think it's a pretty good point, like, as we play new fighting games, developers have gotten just better at making characters good. So it, it might sound weird, but if you really think about it and compare this game with an old fighting game, there's no like bad characters. Even if the Zato players are crying about how bad he is right now compared to the rest of the characters, it is compared to the rest of the characters. He still does like the multiple mix ups with Zato and stuff. The main thing is that you can remove Eddie from him on top of some other nerfs that they gave him. So people were saying Abba was bottom one, legit, when the character came out, like worse than Zato. But right now, pretty much, I think she is a high tier character. Uh, if I was to make a nice new tier list video, I would probably have her in the has a good chance to win type thing. There's three main things about her that I think make the combination of all these things we talked about in the various phases of the game and her as a character pretty good but not like the new bs dlc top tier so one is how polarizing she is between modes so people thought that since she's not like mobile and it honestly almost made me add a new section to neutral because of like how slow she is in this mode um, that you could just run away from her, which is true, but she does build a lot of meter. She has the ability to switch whenever she wants, and she builds a lot of meter from getting hit as well because she can just endure a lot of hits. So she has the opportunity to just try a lot, even stuff that like might not be good and like might be like reaction checks and stuff like a lot. She relies on that a lot until she gets into jealousy rage mode, which is really good. But then you have a problem of if the character has pretty good neutral against her and the main answer is to switch to jealousy rage mode, then you have you are fighting your opponent's burst and they'll tend to wait for your jealousy rage to drain and then burst you. And after that, it becomes very, very difficult to approach again. And there's some characters that are both considered really good at, at this game. So characters like Nago, for example, who are good at this and characters who are considered not as great, but are still good at this. So like Axel. So managing her resource is really key and she can't do it passively. She has to either hit things or absorb things to get the resource. That being said, once she gets started, she's an incredibly, incredibly powerful character and she takes a lot of discipline to actually fight correctly. And finally, there's a lot of characters that are good, but they have to approach you to win. And she's especially good at that because the whole point of normal mode is that she's not mobile. So it makes life a lot easier when your opponent is coming at you and you try to reverse the situation. But then that means you need to be good at defense because you have to reverse their offense into a knockdown. 
So is the character of bottom one? Of course not, but I don't think anyone is thinking she is that weak right now. Is she top 10? Maybe. Is she top tier? Nah, not for sure. Uh, she has enough, at least so far, wild bad matchups that I can't say with certainty that she is like Omega strong meta character, but she is actually pretty good. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, definitely feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Like and subscribe if you guys feel like it, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace out.